and this is my new henna hair root touch-up routine. As my hair got longer, as I started using henna more often, it got much, much more difficult to touch up my own roots, especially in the back of my head where I can't see what's going on. So I wanted to avoid having too much overlap in my henna. I wanted to only get the henna on the exposed roots and not overlap it on the hair I'd already gotten henna on because the more you layer henna, the darker it gets. And my roots are already pretty dark and it takes a long time for them to bleach out in the sun, as you can tell. Um, so this is how light my hair gets after, you know, however long it's been on my head and then my roots are darker. So I wanted to avoid overlap and in avoiding overlap I would section my hair off but then the ends would get super tangled as I went through the whole process. So I figured out this new way to touch up my roots and get as little overlap as possible and do it all myself without having to bother someone else. And I'm still doing it the same way as always. I have my 100% cassia which is my neutral henna and 100% Henna, which is the Lasonia Enormous, and I'm just going to take about half of this little measuring cup full of each one. I don't need very much to do my roots. So it's about half full. You can see they're very similar. I think the, um, the henna is a bit finer, actually. Slightly finer texture. And I've had this chamomile tea sitting. So that's my mud, and I'm just going to cover it up with this little lid that comes with my container. And I'll let it sit for however long it needs to dye release, basically. Um, I'll show you how I test it later on. So it could take anywhere from 6 to 12 hours. It just kind of depends. I mean, um, I moved. So the weather is slightly different, or the temperature is slightly different where I am now than I was a couple weeks ago. So it depends on the temperature, it depends on the crop, it depends on how old that one little bag of henna is. Um, there are a whole bunch of other factors that go into this. And I use hot tea in this, of course that affects it. So I'm just going to leave that lid on there and then I'll come back and test it after it looks like it's starting to separate, okay? So you can see that there's a little bit of a layer on top where it's more red than the rest of the henna. And if you drag something through, there's a slight color difference. So that tells me that the dye is releasing and I'm just going to mix this up and put a tiny bit on my hand to test it. I'll leave it on for two minutes and then rinse it off and we'll see what happens. So I just left that on for about five minutes and I wiped it off and you can see there's the slightest little orange um, stain right there. But probably not enough for the henna to be ready to put on my hair so I'm just going to let it sit for probably another hour or two. So I let my henna sit for about another hour just to let the dye release a little bit more and I have a whole ton of little hair ties I'm going to use. So a bunch of hair ties. I have this brush with the pick at the end that I got at Sally's Beauty Supply and a comb in case I need it. And I'll show you how I touch up my roots. I'm doing my roots myself. So what I'm going to do 
is start around my face first, and then I'll do the top of my head, which I can see in the mirror, which is easy. Then I will put henna, using the brush, on the part that is at the top of this ponytail here. Here, I'll put it on the top of the part, and then I'll flip this ponytail up and do it on the bottom of the part. And that will enable me to get just about a half an inch of roots without getting the rest of my hair. And since it's in these little tiny ponytails, it's not going to get tangled up. So I flip that one up and over when it's done. And then I do the same thing with the next one. I do the top, flip it up, then do underneath, and toss it out of the way. And then once everything is done, I can pull all the little hair ties out of my hair. And I can wash it out without getting my hair tangled up. Okay, so I've done all of my roots and make sure you get down here and at the nape of your neck as well. So I still have all my little ponytails in and what I'm going to do is just scoop them up and leave them tied in and I'm just going to clip them up in a big claw clip. So I'll let that sit for probably about an hour and since I haven't touched up my whole head in probably about three months, after an hour I'll put the rest of this on, let it sit for another half hour and then I'm going to wash the whole thing out. And that's pretty much how I do it. I'm still not using shampoo in my hair. I don't have a video on that yet, but I'm still working on that series, so stay tuned for that. Um, so of course I couldn't just slather my hair in conditioner and rinse it out the way I used to. So I just rinsed it in the bottom of my bathtub for about two minutes, and because I used the little hair ties, my hair didn't get super tangled, so it was so much easier to rinse out the mud at the end. So I just rinsed it and then I used my baking soda and apple cider vinegar solutions. Um, I didn't wash my hair again the next day, but then the day after that, this morning, I did wash my hair. So this is what my henna looks like after it's been oxidizing for two days. It does get more red after a couple of days, so keep that in mind when you touch up your roots. And here's what my roots look like. Good, no? <laughs> so that's pretty much my new hair care routine and I will have more videos later about my whole poo-free experience so I hope you stay tuned for those.